Okay, good afternoon everybody. Um, my name is John Wild. I'm joined here um, with Darren Lynch. Welcome. Um, and we're going to cover a few different things today. What I wanted to do at the beginning is introduce um, Nevin's uh, foundation and then we'll talk a little bit about the challenge and then I'll hand over to Darren who will take you through the process looking through the details in SimScale and then how to extract results into Paraview and post-process them so that you're kind of ready to join the competition. So just to begin, my name is John Wild. I'm the director here um, of the application engineering team. Um, I've got a decent amount of years now of CFD experience in different companies using different codes. I've only been with SimScale now for about three months, but I'm really enjoying the atmosphere here and I really join because I think we have a, a strong future and a nice cloud-based uh, platform. Oh, yeah, and I'm Darren Lynch. Um, I've got experience in CFD and engineering design, and I studied aerospace engineering at Brunel University in the UK. And I'm currently part of the application engineering team here at SimScale. Okay, so just to talk a little bit about Nevin Subotic's um, Stiftung, which is his foundation. Um, it was founded a little while ago, and it's really focused on two things. He's trying to provide access to clean drinking water and good sanitation facilities in a region in northern Ethiopia. Um, he's got a project called WASH, and that's really focused on water, sanitation, and hygiene. And we're more focused right now for this project around the sanitation area. Um, so he's really focusing on trying to ensure access to clean water and sanitation mainly for, for kids so that they haven't got to spend time um, doing things they don't want to be doing and can hopefully spend time um, in school and improving their education levels. So that was obviously a huge amount of people in the world unfortunately still who don't have access to clean water or even basic sanitary facilities. So, and we're focusing here on, on the latter. So what we really want to do is to try to find a way to improve sanitation. I mean, right now it's, it's not ideal. Um, and that's what this challenge is really focused around. Obviously with poor sanitation, you can have diseases spreading very quickly. And if you're in areas like this, you don't also have the help that you need if, if like the worst things happen. Um, and what we're trying to do through the challenge is to um, provide cleaner sanitation facilities and hopefully remove or move waste away from like the surface level of the land and essentially bury it um, yeah and then utilizing CFD um, the idea is to naturally ventilate these um, units and um, to actually make them nice to use as well as being clean so part of this challenge is actually um optimizing the VIP the train design. So what we've done is we've, um, we've provided you a CAD model and what we're going to tell you, uh, help you do is use this CAD model to um, reduce the cost of the design and then we're going to show you how to use CFDs to ensure that it meets some certain criteria. Um, so <clears throat> the participant, participants will be given this 3D CAD model. Um, we'll show you in the, uh, the next demonstration actually how to get the costs and also um, we'll give you a step-by-step -step instructions on how to analyze it and then post-process it to understand the air exchange rate. Now the air exchange rate is, um, is there to make sure that um, the flow goes into the latrine and out of the, uh, the chimney and keeps the, um, the odors away from the occupants um, and this goes a huge way in actually um, making sure that they're safe. Sorry to put you on the spot, Darren, but what is it we're seeing in this image exactly? Uh, so what you're seeing here is the on the surface plot, you're seeing the pressure leading up to the VIP latrine. Um, you're seeing streamlines of the velocity going into the, uh, the vent hole, and you're seeing it going down the drop hole, recirculating and coming back up through the chimney. Thanks. So now I'm going to hop over to the CAD model. Um, and we'll be giving you all these links after the webinar. So this is the CAD model that you're going to be presented with. Um, we have got two scenarios. We've got an inline design, which um, basically means that we have four cubicles all in the line. And we have an alternate design where we have four cubicles, two and two, in a symmetrical layout. 
as presented here. Now, the idea of this is to gain an understanding of what variables um, reduce the cost of this design and then import it into SimScale to ensure that um, to ensure that the the results are sufficient. So in the variable creator, we've got a list of variables. So these variables can be changed um, based on um, certain dimensions. So for example, we could change the uh, drop hole diameter, we could change the vent height to be 0 0.025, and then we just click go, and it would all work. What I've actually put in here is clauses to say where we can and can't um, design. So here I've put a clause in to say that you've got to be in between 0 0.5 and 1.5. So we, we enter a value to satisfy that. And it goes clear and we can go OK. And what that does is it regenerates our design based on those variables. So what we're after doing is actually finding which of these variables reduce the cost. But to understand how to reduce the cost, we, we've got to know how to calculate it. Um, so what I've done is I've designed a script which takes the input and drops out the, um, the cost per component and also the total cost. So if we go up here, we've got a feature script notices button. If you click that, then you'll get a nice readout into um, what costs are involved, um, how much each total cost is going to be for each component. And also at the bottom, we'll be presented with, sorry, presented with a total cost. So this is the value that you're trying to reduce. But at the same time, we've got to make sure that we can design this and also maintain a, um, an air refresh rate. And that's what we're going to use CFD for. So hopping over to our simulation platform now, we can actually import this CAD model that we've modified based on these parameters straight into our platform. And we can do that simply by going geometry, import from one shape, and we'll be presented with a list of our models. This, um, this simulation will be also provided to you in the link, um, so you can copy it, and all you'll be doing is reapplying the setup to your geometry. So, once you've selected one of these models and imported it in as a geometry, you can then create a mesh. So, this is an example of a, uh, of a geometry that I've imported, and what I'm going to do now is um, continue on to mesh, and all we'll be doing is reapplying, um, reapplying these uh, refinements to the geometry as instructed by the step-by-step -step tutorial, um, and those will also be provided to you. So, moving on to the simulations, once we've created this mesh, all we have to do is reapply the boundary conditions from um, the current setup onto our new mesh. And this can be simply done by duplicating a simulation, because you don't want to get rid of the example. And from that duplicate, we can select our new design. And once that occurs, all we have to do then is reapply the boundary conditions. And the boundary conditions are as simple as an inlet, um, an inlet direction, and outlet boundaries will be applied as no slip. Um, so once we've created this um, setup, um, all we have to do is create a new run and download the results. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take you through um, the process in which we need to go through to um, analyze these results and make sure that we've got a minimum criteria. So the criteria that we're actually using um, for this simulation is um, we've got to make sure that the air refreshes at least six times. But we're also going to say that we need to add a safety factor there. So we're going to say that the safety factor um, brings us up to around a refresh rate of eight. And what that means is 
we've got sufficient uh, ratio of air flowing through the design to the volume. And this is calculated in PowerView. So we can, we can use PowerView, um, which I've already created a, um, a state for you. So all you have to do is download the results, um, make sure that the correct results are loaded in, and then we should be able to just go in and analyze. So the main things we're interested in when we get into PowerView is that we follow the instructions that, um, that we've created and that you see there is a slice going through here. We've got to make sure that that actually goes through the, um, the floor. And what this does is it actually just analyzes the flow rate going through the tube. And then we have an addition, uh, additional isolation, which is the volume. And all we simply have to do here is make sure that the bounds are bound by that box. Once, once we're happy there, then we can go along to air exchange rate calculation and read off the air exchange rate. So for this demonstration, I've actually managed to achieve an exchange rate of 10.76. And your target will actually be to reduce the cost without reducing that below eight. Um, Can I ask a question? Of course you can. Is that, what does that mean exactly as an air exchange rate? So the amount of time that the air in total is exchanged per like minute or hour or? Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's kind of a ratio. So it's the, the flow rate going into the design versus the, um, the volume of the design. Mm -hmm. So uh, the higher the exchange rate, the more circulations we've got. Um, the lower, then we've got a, um, a ventilation problem. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously we've, we've got a criteria which is recommended and we don't want to drop below that. Okay, that's where the eight came from. Yeah, the eight came from, yeah. So I think in the papers um, it's actually recommended six, but we want to keep it at eight just to make sure mm -hmm. that we don't fall below and no errors induced. Cool. So once we've done all of this calculation, we'll need to make sure that we repeat the process for different wind directions. Because the objective here is to make sure that the, the refresh rate of eight is actually um, is maintained for different directions. Um, for the symmetric design, we're only interested in two directions, and that's coming in from the north and the west. And that is because we can actually consider the design as symmetric in two planes. However, for the inline design, we're actually going to ask you to do this three times because um, the, coming from, the flow coming from the back isn't going to be the same as the flow coming from the front. Um, and a valid design to submit to the challenge would then therefore be to make sure that your exchange rate is above eight for all wind directions and you believe that you have a, a low scoring um, cost. But bearing in mind the cost function is the cost itself. So. We are going to provide to you, and I will show you that now, actually. If there's any questions at this stage, actually, it would be a good idea to ask them. Um, so if, if anyone's got any questions, just type them away. And I'll be more than happy to revisit any, any stage. Alternatively, um, there is there will be a section here for the um, in the forums, so you can write any question in that section and then we'll get back to you. So I think then I'm just going to run through the, uh, the, the process from beginning to end to make sure that it's really honed in. Um, so what, we, what we're going to do is we're going to go with the geometry, we're going to create any modifications that we, we would like based upon these parameters. So we have parameters such as hole drop diameter, vent hole diameter, uh, vent height, um, roof angle, pit depth, 
And these are all parameters that we feel might have an effect on the flow overall. That's not to say that you can't change the design further, but you should, um, you should also consider um, privacy in your design. So you can't, for example, put a big, a big hole in the door if it's going to, um, if it's not going to be private still. And then, once we've generated that design, we're going to pull the cost. And this cost can be found um, at the bottom of the the current um, the current window, and it's under the main costs. And what you'll actually be doing is submitting a cost, a value for each of the wind directions, and also links to these projects. So you will be required to link the um, the CAD document, and you'll also be required to uh, to link the simulation document. So this just makes sure that um, you know nothing was misset up. For example, the cost calculation was done here, and that is based on these selections. So we'll be checking to make sure that none of these have been modified in the calculation. Then what we'll require you to do is move that over to the platform, import it, reassign the refinements, and mesh. We'll then need you to simulate each direction and that will be two directions for the symmetry case or three directions for the inline case. And simply assigning, um, assigning the boundary conditions to this mesh um, will be all that's required to continue it into the next run. And then you'll need to download each result. That is done simply by clicking on a, clicking on a run and downloading. And then using the, uh, the guide provided, we'll then ask you to open PowerView with the correct result set and then analyze for the air change rate. And this will need to be above eight for each um, scenario, that is each wind direction. And then once submitted, we'll, um, before the deadline, then we'll um, We'll analyze all the designs and see which is the best and also hopefully get some interesting outside insights into um, what sort of design changes actually affect this the uh, most significantly okay thanks any other thoughts or anything else you want to share before you wrap up um, so back to the uh, the geometry I suppose um, it would be interesting to us to see um, if there is any simple fixes um, in terms of increasing the air change rate, even though we're not explicitly after this in the competition, it would be of interest if you could um, do something simple to um, increase the air change rate. Um, so I suppose what I'm saying is this isn't set in stone. Um, although this is um, this is all that's required of you, if you do have more understanding of the CAD and you have some um, some ideas into how to significantly improve this design then we'd be very willing to hear from you and would love to see these design solutions I think um, well two things we need to mention one is obviously like Darren said you need to make sure you keep the doors on um, so it's still a usable still usable um, and the other important thing I think is that um, we need to mention the uh, Nevin Subotic's foundation and the the fact that he's basically covering um, all of the administration costs as himself um, and that he is obviously trusting us and we're trusting you as well you know with um, with this project and it is pretty important and it is going to be really built um, and it's really going to be built in Ethiopia in rural regions and mainly um, for schools so it's an important topic and something that we feel privileged to be trusted with Okay, there was one question that I think maybe we can talk about um, before we wrap up, and that was, could somebody take this out of Onshape and work separately? Um, I think the answer probably is no, because it... Yes, so what we've actually done here is we've created some scripts um, that automate the, not only the design process, but also how we've calculated the cost. So that is not, um, that's not applicable to other CAD softwares. Um, it's very exclusive to Onshape. Um, so I, I don't think there would be any way of you editing in a different CAD software and then bringing it back. I don't think that would work. 
I think um, you'd have to work in on shape, unfortunately. Sorry. Okay. On shape's good. That's yep. all right. <laughs> um, I think the last thing to mention then is that we'll wrap up now. There's no more questions, and we've answered everything that came either via voice or by typing. Yep, answered. Um, and the only final thing to say is that we will send everybody on the call and uh, it obviously logged in as well, a, a copy of the recording and all of the materials and links that you need to join the challenge. Okay. Yep. Yeah, there, there will be a, a forum section. Um, basically in there we have three um, forum posts. One is dedicated to the on-shape part, which gives you step by step um, and that's not just these steps, that is every little thing that you could worry about and what all the variables do um, visually is going to guide you through that. Um, there is another section, sorry, another post for the simulation setup and that gives you step by step setting up the boundary conditions, the mesh refinements, um, downloading the results, everything is covered there in great detail. Um, and finally there is another post on, specifically on the power view part so that will cover importing your um, importing your results, um, changing the filters to obtain this um, uh, change rate, and also um, where to read this off of. And finally, at the end of that post, it also tells you what the requirements are um, in terms of what your design has got to meet. And yep. Yeah. Okay. And all of those have links. So all, all of these documents, um, the geometry document, you will get in a link. Um, the simulation document, you will have that in a link as well. And the power view post-processing states, they will be provided to you as well. So there is nothing that you should have to do that's too manual. Um, simply think about the variables that you're changing, how they're affecting cost, and how we can minimize that while still maintaining a, a certain level of hygiene. Okay, thanks. And thanks everybody for joining. Um, just to wrap up, I know now that you have just under two months um, to compete and um, wish you luck. We look forward to seeing all of your different designs and then obviously seeing one of them ultimately being built as well. Thanks very much. Thank you.